So I was able to find this mower for free by using an app on my phone, and the person who was giving it away told me that the rope is sometimes a bit tough to pull and it smokes a bit after you get it running. I then thanked them for the generosity, loaded it up in the truck, and then took it home. Now, that was last night, so I didn't get a really good look at it, but now that I see it in the light, I'm beginning to realize that there's a bit more going on here than they realize. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at this Troy built lawnmower, and the problem is that this mower can sometimes be a bit tough to start and it smokes. And as I mentioned earlier, there are a couple of nasty surprises waiting for us, but I don't think the previous owners were aware of them. Now, I'm going to try and repair this lawnmower, but yours might be different, so this might not work on yours. So if things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. Now, the person who was giving this away did mention that more than likely, there was probably too much oil in the engine, which makes sense. But we'll need to do a lot more inspection to figure out if that's the only problem with it. Now, the first thing that we need to do is to take a look around and see if there's anything obviously wrong with it. And the most obvious problem is hard to miss, which is a lot of engine oil leaking out of the airbox. Now, this could be a result of either too much oil in the engine, which is what they mentioned, or someone tipped the mower over on the wrong side. We'll get a better idea when we check the oil's condition and its level here in a bit. Now, there is some really bad news, and that is the sticker that shows the model and serial number is missing. That means trying to find the parts for this mower is going to be really difficult, and that's because there are so many variations of this mower. At least the information about the engine is engraved into the block, so we won't have any issues with finding parts for it. The only real good news is that at least it came with a full tank, which is rather nice of them. Now, because of the amount of oil sitting on the mowing deck, you have to wonder if the air filter is ruined as well. And it doesn't take long to see that, yes, the majority of the filter, especially the bottom portion, is saturated with fuel and oil. Now, since this carb is currently not leaking fuel, despite having a full tank, it means this leak is from someone tipping the mower over on the wrong side. And just as we expected, the oil is quite a bit dirtier than we'd like it to be, so we're going to need to change it. Now, there is a little too much oil in the engine, but it's not as much as I was expecting. So let's try and start it and see how bad the smoking is. So it's been running for about five minutes, which means it's very close to normal operating temperatures. Let's try and start it again and see how it does. So it started with a couple of pulls, which is not too bad, and it only took three pulls to start it when cold, which for most would seem acceptable. Now the strange part was that I did not notice any sort of pullback or excessive resistance from the rope. So I'm not sure what the previous owners were talking about, but of course we're going to check on the valve clearances to see if that might be the issue. Now while the hot engine oil is draining out, I'm going to take this chance to clean off what looks like years of grass buildup. Now if you're experiencing a lot of grass clumping while mowing or your mower is stopping while cutting, this sort of buildup might be the reason why. Now you can use whatever you have on hand to help do this job, but after using a flat blade screwdriver to get the larger bits, I'll then use my curved scraper to finish it off. So here's the deal, you can either leave it like this or you can use a pressure washer to get the last bits of it. Now this part is not necessary to do, but it'll make it so that it's less likely to build up as fast if you do clean it. So I've been asked many times if painting the deck or even using some kind of coating will help keep it from building up like this. So my answer is, do whatever you feel like makes you think it'll help out, but keep in mind that under the mowing deck, it's nothing more than a media blaster, and the media is grass clippings. So what I'm getting at is that whatever you spray on the mowing deck will be removed fairly quickly, and the process of building up will start over again. So yes, applying some sort of paint or release agent will help out, but please don't think that it's a cure-all and you'll still have to check it from time to time. That's the reason why I don't bother applying any sort of material on the mowing deck. I feel like it's not really going to help, and I'd rather just use that time to clean it instead. Like I said, don't let my opinions about the topic sway your decision, but instead do what you feel is right. I've seen a lot of people swear by the products they've been using, so if it makes sense to you, then by all means, give it a try. 
Also, if you're curious, I'm using a degreaser from my favorite freight store, but I'm using it at a very high concentration, so I have to be extremely careful. But most engine degreasers will work well, so you don't have to use the same product to get the same results. So I've spent a couple of minutes cleaning the working part of the mower. Now it's time to make sure the engine is not going to overheat while using it. Now don't forget, this is an air-cooled engine, meaning anything covering the cooling fins will get in the way of heat dissipation. That, and if we need to work on the carb as well, it'll at least be clean and not have to worry that we'll contaminate it with dirt or grass clippings. So this is when I noticed something strange. It looks like the sprayer was able to dislodge the arm for the choke. However, after looking at my footage from before cleaning it, it looks like it was disconnected before I started to spray water on it. Now don't worry, we'll take a better look at it here in a bit, but in the meantime, we've got to give it a chance for all that water to dry off. So it's the next day, and as you can tell, all the water is gone. Now we can see what kind of condition the mower is really in. So I tried to put the arm back on its post, but it won't stay like it's supposed to, which means we'll have to take a better look at it. Now I don't see anything wrong with the arm itself, which means there could be something wrong with the post instead. It's also quite obvious that we'll need to clean the base of all this oil, dirt, and grass as well. Now the linkage that's connected to the arm is for the thermostat, and its job is to bypass the choke when the engine is hot. But as you can see and hear, it's not latching to the post like it should, no matter how hard I press on it. There should be a loud snapping sound when it's made a good connection, but that's not the case here. Now, I don't think there's a problem with the arm. Instead, I wonder if this is an aftermarket carb and there's an issue with the post. So my guess would be that the post is just a little bit too short and it's keeping the arm from latching to it. So to deal with it, I decided to cut off about an eighth of an inch off the bottom of the arm to allow it to catch, which seemed to work. Of course, I'll have to attach the linkage from the thermostat as well as making sure the arm is behind the other arm for the choke flap. Once the arm has been installed and works like it should, we can then install the clean air filter base along with the cover. Now, I'm still waiting for the air filter to arrive in the mail, but it should be here pretty soon. But next, we're going to check the valve clearances, and the reason why is because they play a vital role in how the engine starts and runs. So I was trying to take out the spark plug when I realized that the socket that I would typically use on this engine didn't fit, which was kind of odd. And when I took out the spark plug, it all made sense, but we'll come back to why this is important. Right now, we need to get to the valves. So the clearance between the top of the valves and the rocker arms is very important. If there's too little or too much clearance, it could affect how and when the valves open, causing all sorts of issues. After rotating the engine so that one of the rocker arms is all the way down while the other one is loose, we'll then check the clearance on the loose one. Next, I'm going to get my 5 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge out and see how it feels after sliding it into the clearance. Unfortunately, it's much too loose, meaning it'll need to be adjusted, but out of curiosity, I'm going to find out what the clearance has gotten to after not being checked for the last 8 years. So it turns out the clearance has grown to a staggering 31 thousandths of an inch, which has to be the largest value I've ever come across. That could also explain why the rope can be difficult to pull sometimes, that and the extra oil in the engine doesn't help either. After rotating the engine and doing the same process as before, we find out that the other rocker arms clearance is out of tolerance as well, but not as bad as the last one. Now, to make our adjustments, all we need to do is loosen the adjusting nut, then turn the jam bolt out a little bit. Next, we'll insert the 5 thousandths feeler gauge into the clearance and then turn the adjusting nut until the feeler almost gets stuck. Then while holding the nut, we can then turn the jam bolt to lock the nut. After that, check it one more time and make any changes if needed. After that, rotate the engine one more time and do the same process for the other rocker arm. Now, I know the manual says to put the engine on top dead center, but doing it this way is a whole lot easier to manage, especially if you're doing it for the first time. All I know is that if I had been taught this method first versus the other way, it would have made a lot more sense to me back then. Once the valve clearances have been set, we can install the valve cover back on the engine and then double back to the spark plug issue. So the shorter plug on the right was the one that I took out of this engine, which is not the correct plug. The longer one on the left is the correct plug for this engine, and as you can see, there's a massive difference in where the tip of the plug is located at. Now, does the shorter plug work in this engine? Yes, it does, but the engine is not going to work at its best. Now, the reason why is because the flame front will start to happen in the cavity for the spark plug and not in the combustion chamber like it's supposed to. And I could only guess as to the exact impact that it would have on the engine, but let's just say I'd rather not find out, so please make sure you get the correct plug if you're going to replace it. Now, there are only a couple of things left to do before we try and start this engine, but all of them are all vital in making sure this mower will be at its best when we use it. While the blade was off the engine, I sharpened it and more importantly made sure that it was also not out of balance as well. 
Of course, we also need to replace the oil that we took out earlier. Just make sure that you check the oil level, otherwise you could risk damaging the engine. Too much oil and it could cause it to aerate inside the engine, not allowing the oiling system to work like it should. And if there's not enough oil, there won't be enough lubrication, so get it as close to full as possible. I'm just a bit over the add line, which is still safe, but I'll add more after our test run. The last item on our list is to remove all the wheels and lubricate them, which is extremely important for self-propelled mowers. Over time, and if conditions are right, sometimes the wheel will start to rust in place, causing a lot of stress on the engine. This will also affect the rest of the drive system as well, which includes the transmission, belt, and even the pulleys. Now, you don't need to do this very often, but once you're on a regular schedule, I'd say once a year is perfectly fine. Now, on a side note, if the wheel is already spinning well enough on its own, you may not have to take the wheel off the mower. You can instead just spray the lubricant on the back side of the wheel. Now, I bought this filter in a bulk package of 18, which makes each one very affordable, but a single one is still several bucks. So this time it started with a single pull versus the three before doing all the adjustments. Let's see how many pulls it takes to restart it though. So after doing the adjustments, it's now a lot easier to start, which is always a huge plus when trying to sell a mower. Also with the correct amount of oil in the engine, it's not smoking like it was before, which the mosquitoes will thank you for. Now there was a very slight rattling noise from the mower, but it turns out it's just the handlebar for the self-propel when not in use. So how much did we spend on this project? Well, the mower was free. All we had to do was fix the smoking along with the pull rope issue. So besides the $2.5 air filter, about 16 ounces of oil, and a used spark plug, this project should make a decent return on our investment. So my question is, what would you do if your engine was smoking like this one? Check the oil level, or would you consider even doing an oil change to try and fix it? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.